by FM this time round. So we'll have to see. Syndra not really been picked at all in this tournament. I haven't seen it. We oh, saw yeah. it once yesterday, I think. Kastin being banned out, and they're immediately going to take Graves away for Slight. He is going to have that one on the board, and it's going to be proper. Okay, apparently I'm going to have to solo cast a little bit because the scoundrel's mic's going up. But yeah, Graves being locked in straight away for Slight. Graves really strong at the moment. Lots of damage coming out from him. He's got the True Grip passive as well, which keeps him nicely sustained up in the lane. And it looks like Keys is going to lock in the Sona here. A really, really strong support. Lots of damage coming down from her. Him of Valor does a huge amount, especially if you can get the combo with the power cord going out. And then Pantheon being picked up here for proper Panda. Was banned out in a couple of games earlier on. So can actually be really strong. Coming out from the jungle gives you early pressure on the dragon as well with that uh, Aegis of Zeonia, the passive which blocks an auto attack every four shots or so. Dan looks like he's hovering over Leona here for Billy Fufu. Billy Fufu actually had uh, a front page Reddit post with his Leona play recently. Did really well in a 2v5. He's very good at managing his cooldowns and getting in with that Shield of Daybreak stun and the Zenith Blade as well. LeBlanc being picked up for Chris, so he sort of played against him in the last game. Did actually really well, was 5-1 and one against him, but now he's taking that one up. We'll see if he can scale into the late game a bit better than uh, we saw in that last game from the Cambridge Dongers. Brixton looks like he's going to lock in that Syndra Excoundra. You said it, haven't seen it thus far. Syndra into LeBlanc, both of them good harass heavy matchups. Dark Spears coming out from Syndra. Distortion from LeBlanc, of course, can be very good at harassing. And Syndra actually has relatively good wave clear. And you can knock LeBlanc back as she goes in with the distortion if you scatter the weak properly. So can be pretty effective. Jokerism's locked in the Corky. Corky into Graves, both of them very good at harassing. Both of them very good at having that Q burst damage, which we see on a lot of AD carries. And I'm really excited to see how that bot lane does end up going down. Sona and Corky has a lot of early harassment potential with and then a lot of early sustain coming through later into the game with the hit, the, the area of perseverance. Excoundrel, <laughs> I think you've joined me again. There I've, we been, are. We got smiling. I've been smiling for about a minute and a half straight because my, mic my microphone unfortunately died. And it, I think it has come back yeah, online right now. So Sorry I, uh, about the sound quality issues, guys. We've got that sorted, but you know. I am trying to... Uh, I was trying to put on a pretty face. Well, your, like your face is always pretty to me. It's thank, thank you. I love it. Uh, but yeah, no, indeed, we are going to see Brixton going for that Syndra play. So he's very interesting because I, I was hoping it would come out earlier, actually. But everyone been sort of avoiding the play. Yeah. Chris is actually going to pick up the Blanc. Maybe it's because of the fact that people are starting to play the Blanc into Syndra. You don't want to play that. Yeah. There is the potential to outplay the Scatter the Weak yeah, with your Distortion. Scatter the Weak properly onto the Distortion, it can be really strong, especially because if you get them away far enough, they have to burn their Mimic to get back in with the Distortion yeah. again, so they don't get the double Sigil of Malice proc, which is a lot of damage. And the double Ethereal Chains as well can be a lot of damage coming out from the Blanc. Yeah, exactly, and it's a, it's a lot of uh, basically burst come down yeah. to the Syndra. You can look to uh, exploit having a quicker burst and potentially having to get all of the Dark Spheres onto the floor before you can use that Unleash power. Yeah. And obviously you've got a lot of early harass in the form of uh, Sigil of Malice into Distortion too. Actually going to be a locked in Nocturne. So we're going to see Nocturne for the second time in Group A and not on Vidius. It's indeed going to be on FM Dan. And this is a Amumu being hovered over here. I would be surprised. Yeah. But it's actually going to be Scion for keys potentially. He's actually rotating around. I literally have no idea yeah. now. He's just trolling us. I, there's a, a bunch of options left for him. He could go Riven if he really wanted to. We saw Chunky play that superbly well yesterday. Actually, probably the play of the Four Nations thus far. Dragon's Rage kick into that win slash taking out four members in one fell swoop. But he's got a lot of options still available for him in the top lane. Scion might be what he goes for, but is, still yeah. Xin Zhao oh. available as well. I think probably will be Scion. Right at the last way, we're going to lock yep, in. It's the Scion being gonna locked lock in, in the here. Scion. So we're going to see something similar, akin to the way Boosh played Scion, I assume, yeah. making use of that Relentless Onslaught as they uh, move down the lanes. Didn't work out too well for Boosh. He burnt a couple well. of flashes, but wasn't really able to get the, the kill off. The problem with playing Scion in, a, in an arranged team match is it's very easy for the top laner just to say, uh, guys, Scion's missing, be careful. And then everyone knows, and you hear the big boom in the background as you know he's, he pops that unstoppable onslaught, and then you can just dodge out. I mean, Chriso's going to be really easy to dodge exactly. it. Exactly, he's got distortion, distortion as well. you've got quick draw and slight. Yeah. There's a lot there to make sure that unstoppable onslaught, and it's not exactly like it's the quickest moving thing in the world. You can see yeah. this lumbering giant moving towards you mm -hmm. fairly easily, and you can react to it in good time. And distortion and quick draw are both immediate gap closers for the two members there. Okay. So if he's looking to exploit this on other lanes, it's going to be slightly more difficult to pull off. Unless he's just going to be farming in the top lane and then move towards uh, using it in a team fight orientated area. We're going to see yeah. Papa Panda on that 
uh, Pantheon as well. So maybe see him looking to make early exploit on the Dragon as yeah, well. Yeah, quite possibly. I mean, we have seen a couple of times actually F uh, Infuse did that. They've had Wawa go up with Infuse Dan and get that Dragon really easily quite early on. It was about three minutes into the game, actually. Oh, four, four minutes into the game. So you can get those early Dragons. You give up a little bit of pressure if your lanes haven't been able to push out or win the lane. We saw actually usually what Wawa would do when they do that is he'll be really aggressive in the first couple of minutes, make the enemy team a bit scared of him, then clear out a bush, hide in that bush, rotate around towards Dragon and help him out. So I wouldn't be surprised if WizzyU tries to put a lot of early pressure down with that Him of Valor, get her Corky relatively sustained with Aria Perseverance, and then rotate around with Popper Panda to take Dragon. Yeah, I mean, obviously they're going to have a lot of advantage in terms of flat poke damage in that bot lane. Obviously, Leona is one of the supports that really struggles against poke, and if uh, WizzyU is good with his positioning and trying keep himself a, a, a far enough distance away yeah. from Billy Fufu, Foo -Foo, then it's unlikely that Billy Fufu Foo -Foo will have the chance to engage. Now, oh, people used to pick Leona into Sona because Sona was one of the lowest base health champions in the game, mm -hmm. and it was so easy it's all to in get, aggression. Exactly, and it's so easy to get the burst down. She doesn't have any natural uh, gap closes mm -hmm. or uh, ways to escape, so it's easier if you lock up a Sona to take her down as a lot of damage will come down yeah. onto you. But obviously, if there is the poke coming down before Billy Fufu gets that chance, i.e., you know, level one towards level yeah. two, as long as you're not getting over aggressive, then there is the chance that they can start to look to negate Billy Fufu's aggression. Because obviously you want to do that. You want to maybe tame the Leone. You want to make sure you keep her under wraps. If you give her the aggression and the presence in lane, then obviously as Afro taught us all, support is easy, yeah. man. You just need to literally stand there. Presence in the lane, man. Yeah, you just need to stand there, be in range of your Zenith Blade, yeah. and suddenly you have all the presence you need in that lane. In the jungle, though, we're going to see a mirror matchup. Now, we saw previously it was indeed infused Dan playing mm -hmm. the uh, Pantheon into Vidius's Nocturne. Yeah. You saw Infused Dan get very aggressive. Yeah, got a couple of early kills in Vidius' jungle. A couple of early kills in Vidius' jungle just by walking in and being that aggressive monster that Pantheon can be. Yeah. And obviously, really, FM are going to be looking to make sure that Dan gets to six as quick as possible, maybe go for that Devour mm -hmm. enchant. You obviously, you could, like in the old and pre-4 pre 20 patch, you could get that Feral Flare and stack it up quite yep. quickly on Nocturne. It's the same with Devourer, but we are seeing Tundra on Lissandra too. So mm -hmm. Tundra is a very good Lissandra player. Yeah. Very good Very, Lissandra player. very strong on that Lissandra. Of course, couldn't pick the Aurelia that we saw him do incredibly well on in the last game because that was banned out by you what mate now this is you what mates almost their last chance really if if fm esports win this there'll be two teams at 2 and 0 in group a which will be fm esports and infused and they'll be fighting out for that top spot pretty much yeah. if you what mate win it though they open the group right up cambridge strongers are still probably out of contention but you what mate uh, will be one and one fm esports will be one and one infused will be 2 and 0 so then it all comes down to the es fm infused matchup essentially if you what mate win this, uh, Infused are definitely through. Yeah, and then it's second place fight off. And then it's a second place fight off. Uh, what would happen likely here, in fact, I think even even in, in that case, Infused, uh, sorry, even with that case now, I, I feel like Infused should have automatically qualified already anyway. Yeah, because they've beaten. Because they've um, already beaten two members. So if it, came to, if it came to a point where there was a three-way tie, you'd need Cambridge to go on to beat you what mate uh, in their game. Yeah. You'd need you what mate to win here and then you'd need Infused to beat FM. So the rest of them would be one and two, yeah. and then it would be three and oh. With that infused. would be amazing if we had a three-way tie for second place. That would be ridiculous. Yeah, I, I think it's worked out by who's beaten who previously. Yeah, so but there might be, there with might a three-way tie, I think you'd have to have a tiebreaker. Potentially, We'll have yeah. to find out from our admins how that does end up happening, but it would be fascinating, especially since the last game of the day is FM versus Infused as well. That's, that's like, the, even, if infused win, even if FM win this game, it's still the fight for first place. Yeah, exactly. So, what would happen there is obviously if if, if FM lose this one, yeah. they then have the chance to still take first place by beating Infused because then it would go to a head-to-head -head record between yeah, the two of and them. Both be two and and I believe they'll both be two and one. And which, if you uh, if you have a head-to-head -head record and you're the winner of it and you're both tying, I believe it goes to the pe people that won over the other team. So that would be FM qualifying first. If M if M qualify if I if M get this so it does actually regardless yeah. of this game FM even if they lose they would then still have the chance to go through in first if they beat Infused yeah. so it but uh, look let's stop talking about hypotheticals <laughs> scandal. let's talk about real life we're onto the rift in this game between FM Esports and you what mate I'm excited I'm enthralled I'm exhilarated by this FM Esports can they go 2 and 0 in this group A of the Riot Four Nations group stages can they go into next week can they get into those best of threes on the edge of my seat here, Excoundrel. Do you yeah. think there's going to be any level one action? 
Well, we haven't seen too much of it so far, and a very defensive position is coming out yeah. from you, what, mate? We are going to see Syndra on Brixton, though. That is yeah, such a big thing. Champion. It's his best champion by far. He was kind of known for the Brixton uh, Syndra in the <laughs> He was nil. known for the Brixton. But known for the Named Brixton Syndra. Himself. Known for the Brixton Syndra in the null. So uh, yeah. it's something that he's uh, particularly good at, and you'll see him go toe to toe with Chriso. And actually, Chriso is a good mid laner, but. Uh, has had some issues, had some problems. Obviously, Quad Cannon did very well against him. Yeah. He did have an unfavorable matchup oh, there. Oh, definitely, yeah. So it's a little bit more in his favor this time round. So we'll have to see how Chriso does up against uh, Brixton this time round. But yeah, we like will. we said, there's nothing too crazy just going on yet. Yeah, Everyone's what we've seen for the entirety yeah. of 4.20. Like, people play defensively, don't want to give any uh, jungle control out early. We saw actually infused. When they played against Cambridge Dongers, Slight was a little bit over aggressive, got taken down to very low HP before they even got into the lane and then couldn't back. They did end up winning the lane, but for the early early three or four minutes, Infuse definitely struggled in that bot lane because they lost out on that early pressure. Yeah, and uh, we're going to see a early top lane start here in the... Uh, no, that wasn't Infuse, that was FM, wasn't it? FM versus Dongers, sorry. Because yeah. it was Slight who was low. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, that was, the, uh, that was the very early aggressive start. Unfortunately, didn't matter too much as a lot of pressure came down from Dan. And I'd expect a similar amount of pressure potentially, but more likely to be post six as he's going to be on that Nocturne. Yeah. Doesn't have the best of ganks. You still can get decent ganks off with Nocturne. Uh, pre six, you just have to require very good positioning upon entering the lane. Now that fear is not random, you really need to be entering the lane behind your opponents, and the fear will yeah. be pushing them further away from their turret. So, obviously, really the only ideal areas that you can get on this side of the map, especially, would be in that top lane or in that mid lane. Obviously, very difficult to make it work. Properly. Interesting here, they've actually given the majority of the XP from both the Gromp and the Krugs across the AD carries on the respective teams. So, Joker is about to hit level two as well. Slight hit a very early level two was able to engage, but you have to remember there's sustain coming out from Wizzyu and Jokerism, and there's no sustain oh, ability, really? but he will go in. Slight quick draws in as well. Billy not level two yet, though, so he can't get that should have Daybreak done off. Yeah, and all of the uh, experience did go over to Slight from this group, because they actually shared the experience equally between uh, Jokerism and Wizzy. That's why they hit level yeah. two at exactly the same time. So although there was a lot of damage that came down early for the FM side, the level two, double level two advantage for the uh, what mate side meant that they had a little bit more potential to go in. And then obviously, Billy Fufu had a delayed level two. So yeah. He uh, definitely struggled. Look at the damage, though, coming out from Roar of the Slayer, obviously being leveled up very early against Tundra, forcing Tundra to use both of his pots, going up against the Doran's ring. Oh, my word. It's nice just positioning, so though. much damage as well. The thing about that is the minion dies at the end of the cast of Roar of the Slayer, so you're able to get a lot of extra burst damage off it and not have to worry about not getting the minion. Tundra taken so low. Oh, oh first oh. flood. Sniped, my son. That was absolutely fantastic from Tundra. Uh, sorry, from, onto Tundra yeah, onto from Tundra. Uh, Keys, and yeah. unfortunately... 360 No Scope Arena managing no to pick Arena. up the kill right at the edge of it. Really gorgeous play by that. I don't think Tundra even expected it. Had Flash available if he wanted to get away. Has to teleport into the lane. And Keys with that Roar of the Slayer, doing work in the top lane. Got to say, uh, Sion needs to be investing in an ice pick. It looks like he's uh, particularly good at taking down the ice giants. Such as the I've got to say that Papa Panda needs to be careful because Dan is getting rotated on here. Chris was there as well, but Brixton did a good job of coming around. Proper Panda went very aggressive there on Dan, but not quite speedy enough from Chriso to come and join the fight. Yeah, and Dan, not going to be too worried about that. He's got a lot of sustain in the form of his passive. Also has that smite up, so he's probably just going to take this Gromp, smite it, get the health back and head back to base and pick up a couple of uh, potions. Actually, uh, a lot of damage going down onto Keys from Tundra. Keys will just walk away. He'll yeah. just walk away and probably teleport back to lane. Easy as pie to get himself towards some safety, but Proper Panda decided you know what I can do? I can do a four-minute dragon solo. And if he manages to pick this one up, it's going to put you what mate even further into the advantage. They've already got that first blood. If they can get a first dragon as well this early in the game, we're looking at the fourth or fifth dragon about the 30-minute mark. Yeah, I mean, that's really, really good. I, I mean, you've got to expect it with the Pantheon now. It's been a, a tactic that's been around for a while, and you'd have thought FM definitely would have look to put some early vision down but actually you've got to take it back to when that invade happened because yeah. usually that dragon control and that dragon uh, uh, vision would come down from your jungler obviously the invade gave them the space and the time to allow proper Panda to go and do this solo and he's just taken it there that's the first dragon in the game and it was all about forcing dan to the top side of the map 
and then forcing him back. Mm. Really great pl play from Papa Panda. I, I cannot stress enough how much that invade actually worked out in their favor as uh, Brixton could be the target. He's got no mana here. He has to use his rely on his flash if they choose to go in. Yeah, he's got his flash. Dan's gonna get there, trying to get that first header off. It will come out. Scatter the weak actually nicely done, but Chris is gonna keep going. Is he gonna jump in? He will with the ignite tick. Yes. Ah, oh, it does Chris get the kill. Chris picks up the kill onto Brixton. That was nicely done. I think Brixton needed to burn the flash a little bit early. Yeah, I mean, he needed to burn the tether, really. Yeah. You can do that. Obviously, there can be a, uh, a return flash by the Nocturne to keep the tether available. The best chance he had was to try and burn the tether right at the end. Unfortunately, kept his flash right until that last point and went down anyway. So a nice bit of early gold is going to be going over to Chris O and... Uh, uh, forcing, I think, well, not forcing, but he's gone for that early chalice and wants yeah. the early magic resistance, actually. Proper panda after taking that dragon, gonna to, uh, get some more experience. He is two levels down at this point. He's just playing like a man possessed in this top lane, possessed by a lumberjack, perhaps, because he is absolutely destroying Lissandra at the moment. Tundra not having any fun. I have yet to see a Royal Slayer actually miss. Yeah. And, and it's so hard to hit, though. Harassing. Yeah, have you so ever played good. Scion? It's very yeah. hard. Really difficult. Very you hard. have to predict the direction it's going to yeah. go, and especially if you're smart casting it, it can be very difficult to position it correctly. Yeah, really great play from Keys. It's like the uh, the boosh of the United Kingdom right now. Very impressive with this uh, sound play. Just really, he you know, can do this in lane, but he just needs. He's going to fall off. That roar of the Slayer yeah. will eventually fall off. He just needs to make sure that he has a little bit more impact <laughs> around the map. Maybe looks to uh, go towards the next dragon fight. Actually, oh, yeah. Bupu going in bot lane. Wizzy is going to go very low. Smoke screen comes out for Jokerism. With the Gatling gun actually doing a good job of putting some counter pressure down. And at the moment, it's a very close game here between FM Esports and you want me. He's actually used his Relentless Onslaught to clear the wave. Yeah. Uh, and Tundra waited, knowing that he thought he'd back, and then just came back to lane. And actually, he's going to prompt Keys to stay around here, so he's going back to a stalemate in this top lane. Just maybe uh, force him to. Oh, Dan's going to paranoia into the mid lane. Brixton is the target. He knocks the scatter of the weak back, but oh. Dan already level six. Proper Panda, even though he got that early dragon, only level four. You just you lose out a lot by you lose solidifying lot. that dragon for yourself you early. You do, because you take a lot of time to take yeah. it off the board, and that's time you could have spent farming or could have spent ganking, mm -hmm. so you lose a lot of pressure. And now that Brixton has burnt his flash, it's obviously going to be the target for all of the ganks. And again, Dan doing such a good job of getting his laners ahead. Uh, Proper Panda, again, the early dragon, really, really great. But if you uh, lose a lot of control on the board with the ganks coming out from your enemy, enemy jungler, you're not going to have that advantage to back up and try and consolidate and take the next dragon, which is what it's so important for that early dragon allows you to take the next dragon more quickly you have the timer because you know there won't be any vision on it yeah. so vision probably will come down from FM they will see it spawn and will likely be in a position to contend it and especially if their LeBlanc is this far ahead as well as uh, having a kill onto Dan they'll definitely have the pressure to go ahead and take this next dragon fairly easily or at least contend for it more easily than they previously would have been able to oh definitely something we haven't talked about in the top lane Tundra keeping very close on CS he's been harassed out a few times but actually doing a really good job of keeping his CS pretty much equal here. He's four CS ahead, which is really well done by him, even though he lost that early kill as well. Keys and Tundra will have their teleports up for the next dragon, which is really important. Yeah. He's in about two minutes, and uh, apparently there's just a little FPS drop, which is why we've gone into a pause. But it's a really close game thus far. Only a thousand gold the difference, and a lot of that has to be sitting in the mid lane when Brixton's gone down twice, yeah. and he hasn't got his flash for another three minutes or so. So that's going to be pretty dangerous for him. And pause has just happened right there, and even despite Tundra losing out a lot of damage coming out onto Brixton, he's getting uh, taken around the map right here with the beautiful distortion play from Chris Over. Even though Tundra has been losing quite heavily in terms of, uh, you know, just flat out trade, mm -hmm. he's still ahead on CS. And that's yeah. something that we know Tundra is just so good at. Despite not performing well in trades, he's still keeping himself up there on gold with that beautiful CS ability that we know he has. Yeah. Just really, really Brixton's nice. Brixton's doing really well on that as well. LeBlanc, yeah. not known as a good farmer, but Brixton, 57 CS, has his chalice as well. Going to go across and pick up his blue buff. So even though he's behind, as we get into the late game, we see that LeBlanc falls up as you start to build that magic resist build of an Aegis or something like that. And then Syndra will start to come into her own with her unleashed power and the ability to knock away multiple people with the scatter of the week. Should get level 6 from Pantheon fairly soon as well. Yeah. He's just yeah, hit off that just last pinged it there. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see a bot lane gank because Wizzy used 6 as well and has that crescendo available. That's a great combo. Very difficult to pull off a bot lane gank versus a Graves and Leona. Oh, yeah. Graves has got good, quick.
quick draw escape, and also you can use that uh, solar flare directly yeah, on the area that Pantheon in, wants yeah. to jump down, so he can't look to immediately get a stun off. So it's a little bit more difficult as a Pantheon to do that kind of thing, but it does look like that is where he wants to go. He may just have not get spotted out by the minion there, but there is a ward in this next phase. He is going to get picked out by that. Yeah, there you go. None of them have sweepers yet, so they can't sweep that one out. Billy Fufu -Fu and Slight will know that there's a Pantheon waiting in that bush, and that means Dan can go and roam around, take away these Raptors if he likes. Actually, just going to wait around the corner with Paranoia once more. Hoping Brixton's that Brixton overexpends yeah. ever so slightly. Brixton's flash will be up soon. Here's the Paranoia. The ethereal change doesn't land though. Brixton, the second mimic change does get him right on the edge of it. And Chriso helps Dan pick up that kill. And it's exactly what we talked about. They're going to focus it. He hasn't got his flash. And the second change, slight getting dive though. The teleport coming in the bot lane. Bit of Fufu comes onto Jokerism. The Valkyrie away. Teleport's actually going to be allowed to complete because Tundra wants to get onto Proper Panda. But Jokerism is here as well. Frozen Tomb comes out. Tundra on half HP. Not the best of position. Bit of Fufu low. Oh, wow. Jokerism flashes in, hits him with the missile barrage. But here comes. The rest of the FM team, Chriso coming down and Dan as well. Wizu needs to be careful. He's stuck around this for a couple be a of auto attacks. This there. will be a cleanup. Here comes Chriso. Oh, misses the first ethereal change. The counter teleport coming in. Sion there. They're going to back away from that one. They can see it coming in. And Keys just gets his team out towards safety. A good little trade there for you, what, mate? And FM do manage to pick up a kill of their own. We're starting to see the real value of this Nocturne when looking to gank the Syndra. Yeah. Obviously, the spell shield that he has built into his kit is really fantastic as blo a blocking scatter the weak, and you can see when they'll a want to use it, really, and you can just pop it on, and unless a Dark Sphere proxy beforehand, you're going to block the scatter the weak. FM don't have the Dragon Turn at all. They as don't. soon as it comes up, we see what they're going for it. Chris O just walked towards the top lane. We've seen Dan back away as well. It's going to be the second dragon of the game here, going across to you, what, mate? Lateral damage doesn't manage to pick it up there. Nice smite and double dragon. That's going to make up for a lot of the shortcomings for the UOP mate team right now. And again, there wasn't the vision control of dragon. In fact, there hasn't been any vision control invested by FM into that area, which is a bit odd considering 11 minutes in the game is when you'd expect at least one of the dragons to have been attempted yeah. or, or or anything like that. And especially against a Pantheon, mm -hmm. you know, you know he has that ability to take those early dragons and and you can even see on your enemy if they have that dragon buff. Yeah. So if they're paying attention, they would have known at least one of them has gone down. So there must have been a time in the next few minutes that it would have been respawning. But again, a lot of vision uh, not being placed on the on the wards uh, on the map by FM. So uh, struggling in that sense, and something that I think a few would be watching carefully. Yeah. So I'm going to see Tundra actually eke out a bit more of an advantage in this top lane. There's a big wave here for Key, so he should be able to get back close on that CS differential. But if Tundra can keep doing what he's doing at the moment, as you said, oh, Roy is actually still doing a huge amount of damage onto Tundra. Ring of Frost will slow him down. Does get slowed out by that decimating smash as well. But Key's eating a couple of ice shards here. Liking that McFlurry means that he... Uh, can't quite manage to survive as long as he'd like. There comes Other the Grand Sky actually cancelled out. Brixton's going to get jumped on here by Chriso. The Ethereum Chains comes out, and Brixton trying to predict where Chriso would distort across towards. Proper Panda, I thought he started charging the Grand Sky there. I think he might have cancelled it. Yeah, it is straight up, so he can easily have that back on. You can cancel Grand Sky yeah. as Pantheon. It immediately comes off cooldown after a few second grace period, but... Yeah, I mean, in the top lane, though, we are seeing Keys go for a very defensive. Going to be yeah. going for that Spirit Visage first, so... Uh, very, like, basically the item of choice you would choose to get yeah, in the top lane. He landed a minion from War of the Slayer yeah. on Tundra, who was hiding in the bush. He had no vision of yeah. him at all. He's oh, on form bot at the lane. Bot lane. <laughs> Billy Fufu is going to go so low. Popper Panda jumps in, then missile from Jokerism. Snipes him off right at the end. Nicely done there. Popper Panda came in with the Grand Skyfall and helped pick up another kill for his team. Could have been a lot more smooth. You see the crescendo actually completely missed yeah. from Wizzy at the end there. But did manage to pick up the kill with the flash and a stray missile, giving a lot of gold over to Jokerism, doing very well on this Corky right now. And Billy Fufu and Slight, they're having a bit of a tough time in yeah, this bot lane so far. And a lot of it is because a lot of input has been on the mid lane for FM, whereas Proper Panda has been able to gonna get full on engaged. The Paranoid comes out. Look at how tanky he is though. There's the frozen tomb. They're gonna try and lock him up for days. He's Flashes away, tries to pop that unstoppable onslaught, oh, but wow. he will go down. And Dan flashed actually really nicely there in the path of the unstoppable yeah, onslaught he did. to stop Sion getting away. Really great flash. And also, you've got to give credit to Tundra for the timing of the uh, Frozen Tomb. Yeah. It may not have looked as much, but as soon as that decimating strike was about to hit, he used the Frozen Tomb and cancelled it. So a really great play from both sides there. And the flash was absolutely fantastic. I mean, you knew that was potentially going to be the area that... What, that uh, he wanted to use, he wanted yeah. to use it to get away, and immediately the uh, flash from Dan meant that there was a, a free kill right there as the lot of, not, a, not a lot of damage comes down from uh, Brixton onto uh, Crystal, and it's probably there's a theme for being a lot more oh, wow, there point. he goes in, he's got oh, the wow. Ethereum change, he's got the Ignite, that is a very dead Syndra. Is he going to be able to cancel it out? No, not quite. Crystal picks up the kill, and uh, 
that's just good play from LeBlanc in the mid lane. He's gone Athens first, which is probably why he's not doing as much damage as you'd like. But it's quite a nice build on a LeBlanc, especially against someone with high burst damage like a Syndra. Well, Athens, to be honest, is a, a pretty decent pickup. You yeah. saw a lot of uh, players in Korea going Athens first because yeah, you get the cooldown reduction, which is nice for LeBlanc. Obviously, it's nice for any mid laner, really. The magic resist is really strong against Syndra, and actually, Brixton. I didn't realize how tough of a time he's been having. Zero, but yeah. zero, four, zero. Yes. When he's eighty percent of his team's deaths. Yeah, 80 but eighty percent of them. It's uh, a lot of it is just because of the amount of issue, amount of uh, time that's been invested. I'm just going to get jumped on here by Bob Panda Keys as well. The flash away. Are they going to chase onto this? It looks like Keys wants to go for it. Decimating Strats will knock him up. Bob Panda going in as well. Nice oh, frozen wow. tomb. Papa Panda is there. Here comes Keys as well. I'm not sure Tundra will be able to survive this one. He hasn't. He has actually got that glacial path available. War of the Slayer not connecting. The Tundra just manages to back away. They don't want to die for too long against a Lissandra, the Ice Queen. Actually, to be honest, they probably could have gone for him, yeah. but Proper Panda didn't have the mana for a spear shot. Uh -huh. Only just came up as he was backing. So Tundra, with a fantastic frozen tomb, manages to save his life from that dive. A minute and 43 for the next dragon. So I'm assuming FM will want to contest this, they won't want to let another one slip away, and they've definitely got the slight advantage in terms of team fight at this point as well. Uh, right, Tundra decided to teleport to top lane, so they actually might not have the advantage if Keys keeps his own teleport available. Yeah, he does need to be careful though, will need to back fairly soon. He's got a minute and 25 on the board. Roar of the Slayer still doing a lot of damage at this point, uh, and he can obviously spam that as a fairly spammable yeah. skill. For Sion. He's got the cooldown reduction from the Spirit Bazaar too. That's only going to be of great help to him as he's job at farming. Yeah, like he's got Tundra down to half HP already. He's doing such a good job. Chriso tries to come up for the gank, but it's going to be spotted out by that pink ward, and Keys will just back away. Gives Brixton a little bit of time to farm up in the mid lane, which is really nice for him. He's equal on CS with this LeBlanc, doing okay considering he's 0 4, but not really having the best time as we've mentioned before. Meanwhile, we see Proper Panda and Wizzyu are just trying to set up a little trap card here. Have they activated the death bush? It doesn't look like it. There's the scrying orb, and they will spot them out in the bush. Proper Panda not going to be able to get much out of that. They will get the bot lane tower, though, and we're dragging up in 40 seconds. Gives them that little bit of match. Dan wants to go one. for this. Dan wants to take the paranoia and go for this. He hasn't got the backup. It looks like uh, Crystal is heading down, too. They're just trying to get a bit of a uh, pressure down, but an immediate they're disengage. Put, they're putting the dragon pressure down. They've actually got the timer this time, so they can put a little bit of pressure down. We see actually Tundra knows he's used his teleport. He's actually just going to walk into this mid lane. Yeah, he needs to though. Dragon is such an important thing for FM at this point. They can't afford to give up any more time or give up any more dragons at this point either. Three dragons would potentially spell a bad, bad game. Oh, oh the they're going to go onto Brixton in the back line. Billy Fufu gets destroyed though. Brixton flashes out. Jokerism there. He gets the Ethereal Chain. And here comes the unstoppable onslaught all the way oh. from mid lane. Wow. Here he comes and he is not going to connect on anyone. Brixton does manage to pick up Tundra. Dan is there as well. He's going to try and go back in. He'll get taken out. A double kill for Brixton. He's back in the game. They're going to turn around onto Chriso. And actually, we see Pantheon, Papa Panda going down 1v1 to Slight in the bot lane. Chriso's going to be the next target. He gets stunned up. They're going to try and get onto him. He's running for his life, but not going to be able to escape for long. The heal actually coming out from Slight might keep him alive. There's no tower there anymore. The big one comes out from Jokerism after that. Valkyrie going to chase. Decimating Strat Smash. Not going to connect onto Slight. The stun oh, is, the though, stun. and that is a very dead Graves. He's going to an early grave, and Brixton helps Keys pick up that kill with a great scatter of the week. Uh, it was absolutely fantastic. Brixton just needed a little bit of time to get back into the game. He was sitting on almost equal items with his LeBlanc. It was just the farm that he was keeping up with. He managed to stay relevant. Replay. We're going to see in the replay there. Dan, very aggressive. Actually, Brixton not getting taken out was really key. The exhaust going number to me flushed his overall was really fantastic. And Tundra getting locked up by that uh, ultimate persona was really key. Didn't have anything to follow up with on the Frozen Tomb. And then essentially Dan getting taken out right at the end. Really nice fight there for uh, you what, mate? And it really puts the pressure on FM. Brixton, yeah, Brixton gets caught out just by Panda. Panda as well. Stayed around a little bit too long. Tried to come around to the mid lane to protect this tower, but Proper Panda knew he needs to give up the ghost. Frozen Tomb on him actually doesn't know he needs to give up the ghost. Gets taken out by Billy Fufu. Just staying around a little bit too long on you what, mate? Might give up two towers for this dragon now. Yeah, they did get the third dragon in the game, so pretty decent for them, and there will be people yeah, to defend this tower. tower. But they did give up a lot of gold and a big yeah. amount of map pressure now. They've lost that mid lane tower. It still stands for FM, so a lot of pressure and a lot of work needed to be done for you what mate at this point because right now they're really starting to suffer. Well, you what mate with that dragon with a good kill uh, set of kills off the fight as well it's eight and eight at the moment a very yeah, close game definitely. and they are dragons ahead they're three dragons ahead so if you look at it just as global ejectors they're actually ahead in this game especially with Brixton picking up oh, those two kills. Definitely. The only reason the only reason they say they're going to suffer is obviously now they're going to lose that oh, yeah, control of yeah, their they jungle. They haven't got that mid lane control They haven't got anymore. that mid lane control and obviously Brixton being a target 
means that even without his mid lane turret, if he wants to push up and farm, it's going to be an easy area for FM to look to exploit. Mm -hmm. Consistently put more pressure onto Brixton. You saw that that's where FM started to garner control. If they put the pressure onto Brixton, they were starting to get the control that they needed. The unfortunate thing was that the other lanes were doing well yeah. anyway for you want mate. So FM couldn't capitalize on the fact that they were keeping down you what mate star player. And once you take Brixton down, usually you, you think that you want me all engage yeah, on the bot lane. Slight. He tries to quick draw away, but he needs to be careful because Wizzy is around the corner. There's a the crescendo. They're going to go on to that Graves, and he's going to go down very quickly. Foster is one by Joker, and will pick up the kill. Billy Buku with the unleashed power from Brixton goes down as well. 10 kills to 8, and we do see your what mate start to take the gold lead. Yeah, again, your what mate just capitalizing on the fact that they're losing that mid pressure around mid, so they're looking to exploit the areas that they do have the pressure in, and they've got a big amount of pressure in this bot, and it's something that they've been winning all game. Yeah. Wizzy and Jokerism having a fantastic game against Billy Fufu and Slight. Slight having picked up a more auto attack based AD carry, although there is the buckshot and the collateral damage. Yeah. Less effective uh, than he has been on that Corky. He was so good on that Corky previously. And uh, Brixton starting to get his way back into the game. Yeah. He was shut down early game, but you cannot keep this guy on Syndra down. And the thing is, this is what Brixton is so good at. It's his team fight control that makes him such a good Brixton player. Brixton player, such a good, I've done that twice now. Such a good Syndra player, rather. I, you know, he, um, he has the ability to hit the scatter the weeks when they matter. He uses his unleashed power at the most effective targets yeah. and also keeps himself safe, especially like you saw in that dragon fight previously. He put himself in a position where he was out of the fight, couldn't be focused. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Really, really great play to get himself back from 0 4 to 3 5 and 3. Uh, you can't say anything more than that for that guy. Looks like there's going to be another tower going timber in the top lane. Keys actually decides not to go for that one because he sees that Chriso and Dan are coming up the river. Popper Panda's man in the corner. There's the paranoia. He's pops for that shield and is he going to be able to escape? He will with a flash. A few chains comes out and Chriso just dodges back out with his own distortion. Meanwhile, Slight pushing down the bot lane will be able to take this tower probably because there's no one around. but. The sides against it, just going to let that minion wave die to the Red Balls of Death coming out from the uh, You What Mate Tower. Yeah, this is um, this is pretty big yeah. from You What Mate right now because they are using a lot of key ultimates from, like like the yeah, Paranoia, yeah. a lot of key ultimates being used here. And that's a big cooldown to burn, especially on a target like Scion, who is very tanky at this point in time. And without that Paranoia, it just gives the pressure relaxed for You What Mate. They can go and take that mid lane turret and start to further extend their lead. Now, FM really needs to step up here. Like we said, if they lose here, then there is the potential for a three-way tie because the way Infused have been playing, and FM probably won't be able to beat them, just based on what we've seen today. You know, previously, FM have you know, had, had the ability to beat Infused, but right now, you know, you what mate who are considered probably the third favourites in the group are yeah. really having a great game. Uh, yeah, you what mate play superbly yeah. well as well. You have to give them credit for that. This tower in the top lane very low at the moment. They're going to push up towards that. Should go down pretty easily here for you what mate. They pick up another tower, three to one now. Two thousand gold is the lead. And after a couple of minutes ago, just seeing you what mate start to take that gold lead, they solidified their position. They picked up the ages oh, as well. Dan's Dan. going to go quite low. Right, not go quite low. He's going to get caught out by the scatter of the week. The Grand Sky Ball coming as well. Brixton goes on Chris because he knows he's used his distortion. Oh, no, bit aggressive. Well. Teleport though. Brixton very aggressive. Crescendo comes out and Billy Fufu. There's the frozen tomb by Tundra right in the middle of more Counter teleports coming in though. And they're going to go on to Tundra, who's exhausted. Slights the next target. He picks up Wizzy you and keys their unstoppable onslaughts into a wall which is not quite the way he wanted to go, I'm sure. Yeah, interesting choice from your what, mate, there. The Grand Skyfall wasn't actually ending, entering in this position where they could actually use, to use anything from the back of it. And unfortunately, Brixton, very aggressive with the flash, didn't manage to pick up the kill onto Christo. So Brixton then put himself in a precarious position, was locked up fairly easily, and unfortunately, uh, Sona had to be the... Uh, sacrificial Sona. Sacrificial Sona, in that sense. And he Sung a hymn of valor yeah. for herself. But the crescendo yeah. was good, good defensive yeah, crescendo. Good crescendo. I believe Dan actually blocked it. Yeah, with his spell with shield, his really, spell well, shield, done really well done. But it did mean that it's a bit of a relief for FM. They relieve a bit of pressure in that mid lane and also yeah. get some much needed gold onto Slight. And that's such an important thing because he's starting to lag severely behind uh, Corky now. Joker has even managed to pick up a QSS. So he wants to get rid of that ethereal frozen, chains in the fear in the frozen tomb. tomb. Yeah. yeah, there's enough CC on the enemy team to make that a good second item build because, of course, he's got his pickaxe and his vampire except He's got a bit of life, still got a bit of extra damage. But along with the sorcerer's boots, if you have that trifle, you do a lot of damage already. As Corky, you've got the split damage as well with that magic damage coming out. And they're going to pick up this rift scuttler. They're going to rotate towards the dragon. Billy Fufu trying to get around the side. Dragon is live now. It would be their fourth of the game if they managed to pick it up. 
So FM Esports definitely want to contest this one there. Extra damage to power. So good. Tundra taken to half. Oh Actually, my word. Is going to go in the Frozen Tomb using an awful position. There's a the solo play. Mini Fuku. Slight picks up Froppy Panda. But and with that Frozen Tomb down, you have to expect you want to be able to put some pressure down. Crypto jumps in. They have lost their jungler though. So they can't have any smite war over this dragon. They need to take someone out from FM before they can look at fighting more. They've got the crescendo available in a couple they, of seconds. They can stall for 20 yeah. seconds and wait for Froppy Panda to get, to get in position for a grand skyfall. Yeah. That is a possibility right now. Again, interesting team fight decision choice from you what mate there. You jump over the wall onto Alessandra, who you know probably has ultimate available, yeah. and you probably won't be able to burst her because she will just use her frozen tomb on herself. Are they gonna do dragon when there's a smite up on the enemy team? They are. Proper panda will almost be in range for the grand sky. No, it's not gonna be quick it's enough. So dangerous because yeah. Oh Slight Light. Brixton with the bait, Slight has to flash away and that is the dragon. If he can get Grand Skyfall into range here, he's gonna come in onto right on top of that dragon. They should be able to pick this one up. There it is, the power noise comes in as well from Dan, he's gonna get destroyed up beautiful! Crescendo locks up Tundra, Billy Fubu there as well, he's in the midline, Tundra goes down, Slight in the backline, doesn't have flash, has to be so careful with Jokerism, is going to jump on him, and that is a very dead graze, with you actually picking up the kill there with the Himabala, Crystal gets stunned oh, up, and the Unleashed Crystal. Power Brixton comes back from miles behind, now 4-5-5, five and five, and you what mate, win the fight. That was a massive combination of the Unleashed Power and the big one from the Rocket there, and that is, you what mate, are really bringing it out in this game, and that's on their mum. They swear Let's on that have a look mate. at this replay. So there we go. The Grand Spyball comes in. And what's so important is that he immediately gets the smite yeah. down. Dan wanted to get the smite with that nocturnal um, ultimate Paranoid, there. And everyone yeah. else is just a lovely rotation there. You can see Keys. He was the target and even manages to escape on such a low amount of health. And that, that was just fantastic from yeah. Yuwatmate. Superb play by, by Yuwatmate. They split the FM team in two. Had Chriso down towards the Dragon Pit. Had Dan back at the Fountain and dead. Had Tundra back at the Fountain and dead. And then they could chase Slight and Billy Fufu off towards the side of the fight. Because they'd already burned the flash on Graves, it meant that he could not be aggressive in that fight. It had to be really passive up to the top side of the river. Superb play by you. The problem was they used their um, paranoia defensively to get the yeah. dragon. And they didn't pick it up either. Yeah, they didn't manage to pick it up. It was just a perfectly timed smite from Copper Panda and unfortunately didn't work out for FM. And then they didn't have any targets to focus because of the way that the yeah. uh, Uwatmate team have positioned. They focused the Scion who is really not the target that you have to be worried about. Right now, it's actually Brixton or um, Jokerism. Yeah. Those two are really doing the damage right now. And to be honest, FM, they're not looking in good shape. Right, all credit to Proper Panda as well. He was two to three levels behind on that smite war and yeah. still managed to win it. Oh, Grand Skyfall damage helped, of course, but being able to pick that out when Dan has double his CS pretty much, really well done by that Pantheon. He's gone for the Hex Drinker and is has got that warrior enchantment on his range of trailblazers as well. So he's pretty tanky at the moment, going for just a mix of magic resist and health at the moment. Probably going to build that second Aegis that we've seen twice when we have that LeBlanc in the game. Yeah, and it does make a lot of sense, actually. We saw it from Infused. It worked out so well. Uh, yeah, I think it was Infused yep. that we yep. saw it come out from. And it just worked out so fantastically well. Um, or was it actually FM building it? I think I actually think it was FM building it against Cambridge Donger's quad cannon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it was uh, the double... Um, Double lock at the Ancillary. They're actually using their own tactic against them. Very, very solid against a uh, high AP team. So there we are. We're going to see that one uh, coming through. Obviously, the, the buff does not stack, but the double shield does. So it's always nice to have that double shield. And also, if one of them dies, you also have that buff to remain on your other member of time. So it's always Let's have a look at the Golden really Cross support here. So it is very decent, actually. And Sion only a couple of hundred ahead. Actually, if you look at the jungles, there's 2,000 behind but not the way you'd expect. Proper Panda is 2,000 behind his lane opponent. Like you just moment. need to look at the CS yeah, to know that what's happening Massive there. CS difference. And then mid lane, Brixton taking the gold lead. He's about 700 ahead. And then it's about 1,500 in that AD carry roll as well. 2,000 in the support. Wizio and Joke with having the game of their lives at the moment, just being dominant against this FM bot lane. You think about the, the Dragon buff, a lot of it will explain as to why they are doing a lot better yeah. despite the small gold lead. The 8% AD and AP, like mm -hmm. if you just look at it from a maths perspective, there's 240, 230 flat AD on Corky right yeah. now, plus another 8%. You're probably sitting on another pickaxe worth of gold yeah. there. So you've got to add essentially about 675 gold to each mm -hmm. member of the team with that AD and AP. Obviously, it, it works out a little bit differently between the stats that you're looking at, but really, Basically, team-wide, the AD and AP bonus, especially the ones that they both benefits in both senses, like Corky, you're probably sitting at like a 3,000 extra gold lead just based on that buff right there and pure stats alone. So about Baron things coming out here from the side of you, what mate? Was you trying to position himself? To oh, get the in there. they're going to go into Crisso. He's going to jump away though. Proper Panda jumps in there. Does get the stun up. They're going to go oh all in. The crescendo. But look at the frozen tomb on the backline. Dan jumps in and 
you know what may have overextended into this fight. Joe Grissom might be able to turn around. The Ring of Boss gets keys. Oh, Joe Grissom's wow. going to go down, though. And the Frozen Team from the side was huge. They oh, went way word. too deep. Tundra came in from the side. And FM Esports with a superb turnaround play after it looked like Chris and Billy Fufu had been caught way off guard. That was absolutely crazy from FM, and they needed that play. You're going to see it exactly here. They focus onto Chriso and Tundra. No one expects Tundra coming on the side, and look at the damage coming out from his ultimate. That is exactly what they needed. They cleaned up the backline, and then most importantly, they took out Brixton before he had the chance to do the damage. Jokerism then got taken out because Slight wasn't being focused, and it was just that frozen team, and Key's going to get caught out. Now. I want to do credit, uh, give credit to Keys though. He baited them there for about 30 seconds. Right. That gave him time for the investment of his team to respawn. Yes, they get another kill, and it's 15 to 15. FM Esports taking the lead in the gold once more. But they need, but, that, they need that to happen yeah, again. They needed the time there for you want mate to respawn. Keys did yeah. a really good job. Also, but they need that to happen again. Oh, if, FM, if FM really want to get back into this game, that needs to happen either at this Baron, or they need to be able to take the next Dragon. But there's no vision again for FM. The first thing you see there, is though, Slight. going to jump onto Slight if he can. Doesn't have flash available, of course. Oh, oh Slight! Out of the way across the wall, but Slight will have the quick draw. He pops down the smoke screen. Proper Panda flashes in. They're going to get onto him. And it's oh, a dead no. grave. He's going to an early grave. Dan is there as well, but here, oh, here comes, comes Tundra. Tundra. Again, look at this. In the middle of them, the solar flame on top of it as well. And Wizard you gets taken down. Down. Chriso picks up the kill, Brixton off to the side, unleash power on Tundra who Zonya's it, Proper Panda will go down as well. Jokerism trying to fight out as much as he can, he might get Chriso, he will get Chriso, and Keys is there with the teleport as well. We see Brixton running off towards the top side of the map, Tundra is there, he's going to get locked in here by Brixton though who's very very low. Can they win the fight? They can, a double kill there for Jokerism and a great little fight there after what looked like a superb fight for FM again. It looks like you what mate have taken the fight. Looks like they're going for Dragon, it's going to be a 5 Dragon lead if you what mate get this, but again, that should really have gone well in favor of you what mate from what it looked like. The AD carry getting completely yeah. taken out. Slight was not even in that fight, but a beautiful ultimate. Once again, that toes on two. Into just... Solar Flare as well. Locked yeah. up two people for the entire duration. Really nicely done. They need to be careful here because Dan and Billy Fufu can come in from the side. Joker's and Solo. Dan's going to jump onto Keys. That's not the target you want. Brixton there as well. He's going to actually get Zenith oh, played by Billy Fufu, but he gets knocked back. Dan is the next target. The Van Skyball coming in. Oh, Dan's been locked word. up for days, and Wizzy Boo comes in this as well. Be the fifth They're going to pick up the fifth dragon. Wizzy U is so low. Slight coming in from the side has collateral damage. There it comes. The Zonyas from Brixton keeps himself alive. Billy Fufu is it playing onto Wizzy on the back line. Here comes Joker though. Nice crescendo right before he dies and slides the next target. A great fight for you, what, mate? They go 21 18 up. They get the fifth dragon. They get three kills. And they're going to push down for this inhibitor mid lane. Yeah, I mean, that was ambitious that the paranoia was so early from Dan that he didn't need to go in immediately. He could have used it even to try and Oh, Chris trying to go in, but he's oh, going to get to distort back though. He can distort back, which he oh, does well. Wow. Across towards the Raptors. Does get ignited, not going to be get taken out by that scatter of the week. It's Tundra and Chris o versus the world at the moment. And it looks like you what, mate, are going to just back themselves away. Get back to safety, get some items, get some health, and then maybe get the bounce. Yeah, I mean, the five dragon buff though is such a big, big thing for the next three minutes they're not going to be able to go for team fights because yeah. you just got to 16 look at 16 percent ad 16 percent ad and ap you've got 30 percent damage to minions and monsters you've got 10 percent movement speed and 30 percent damage to structures yeah. and buildings it's absolutely ridiculous <laughs> on top of that you have a red buff for yeah. the entire of your team and does a little bit more damage than red yeah. buff i believe i think it's 150 true damage 150 or so over three seconds or something like that so it, it's pretty big in terms of actual uh, stats that it provides it's, it's basically, like we said, bar Baron buff on steroids. Talking about pretty big Infinity Edge finished on Jokerism as well. He's 8-1. and one. Like We've talked all the time about Brixton in that mid lane because he was the one who's being focused, but secretly, silently, Jokerism has risen up, and he's 8-1. and one. Trinity Force, BS Sword, uh, Infinity Edge, Quicksilver Sash as well, along with that Vampire Scepter. Have to expect him to go for a Blood Thirster okay, next. Yeah. He is so, so beefy at the moment, and Wizzyu as well. Perfect crescendos. Even just before he dies, he managed to get a two-man crescendo off in that Dragon fight. He is on form at the moment. Yeah, exactly. It's really fantastic from you, what mate? And I'm, to be honest, I think FM probably are a bit shell shocked as Billy Yeah, Fufu They're going to go on to slight. There's the crescendo again. The Grand Sky Ball position perfectly at the back line. They're going to jump onto slight. You need to be careful because Dan and Billy Fufu are in the middle of it. Slight has gone down. Wizzy is there. Dan's going to go down here to Keith as well. Proper Panda off towards the side. Billy Fufu is the next target. Tundra nowhere near this. No frozen two for him. He's going to try and get in. He's going to he go, go for in, it. But wait, everyone is dead, Tundra. Oh, You're way too late. No. You're going to go down after this. Zonya's a golden death for you. And it's a double kill picked up for Joker. And they're going to push down mid lane. Can they take inhibitors off this? They can take inhibitors for sure. They've got 20 seconds. This will be a massive, massive lead 
for you what mate there is the potential to even finish the game with that Baron versus the steroid dragon buff it's 10 that, seconds on slight 10 seconds on slight seconds, I, mean, they, I think it's probably a little bit too, yeah, too ambitious they, they should go for Baron I think a good quick Baron here slight can't defend against it Dan it hasn't got paranoia you do available won't be able to get there 30% extra damage right now to Baron 30% yeah. extra damage and they can burn it before anyone can get there it absolutely ridiculous that they can take it and it surely will secure the knocking the risk up in terms of yeah, look how quickly that's going down. your buddy look at that it's already down to 8000 HP it's going to go down there's no way Dan can get anywhere near this for a smite war Tundra way too late in that team fight still not even red and it's 26 to 18 7000 gold to lead you're what mate with a Baron buff with five dragons on them as well and the red buff being picked over here by Jokerism what can FM do to stop this unstoppable onslaught? I don't know. They, they really, really, really need to get Tundra in the fight and do exactly what he did previously. Yeah. He needs to be able to get the damage on the back line. If Brixton and Jokerism are not being focused, then there's literally nothing that FM can do to win these fights. Keys is not a target you want to yeah. focus. He doesn't do a lot of damage at this point in the game. He's not a massive, massive threat. Proper Panda does do a bit of damage, but not as much. It's going to start to fall off. Dan is getting a bit of impetus behind his uh, Devourer. He's getting a lot of damage on the board with it. He's it's got a... on 47 sacks, so it's 97 extra magic damage on hit. And with the Blade of the Ruin King, it's going to stack yeah. up really well. He's also managed to finish up a Sunfire Cape, so we'll have a little bit of tankiness behind him. But really, right now, it's really going to rely on Tundra and Chriso yeah. being able to burst targets. And they had a couple of great fights just a couple of minutes yeah. ago. And if Tundra can get in there with the Frozen... Uh, the Frozen Tomb managed to even do it on himself into that Zonius. He's really not susceptible to any damage. If you get the Solar Fire along with that, it's huge. But at the moment, Tundra oh, goes in. Oh, Brixton! he gets destroyed. And Joker is in there as well. Eventual part into the back line. Billy Fufu trying to chase away. There's a crescendo. And look at this proper panda from the side. He grand skyboard in. Tundra uses the Zonius to keep himself alive. Oh, Tundra picks up two. Joker is in there though. And he's got a huge amount of damage. Dan is the next target faster as well. He has to flash away. Look at that damage onto Chriso. Two auto attacks almost takes him out. Slight running away as well. The crits from Jokerism are very, very real. They're no joke. And they're going to go for the bot lane in a tower. They can push to the inhibitor tower as well because there are super minions in the FM Esports space. They need to be so careful. They don't want to lose their Nexus towers just because they're trying to fight. Yeah, to be honest, that was a perfect fight for FM. They picked off Brixton before it even started. But perfect kiting from yeah. Jokerism to manage to keep himself alive. And no one could get on top of him because he's, he's just, just so big. You're just going to see it here. They're going to immediately get Brixton up there. He goes down straight away. That's such a big thing for FM. But look at the back line. Slight is the only one available. And Proper Panda is going to go straight on top of him. So Slight cannot do the damage to the rest of the team. They do get the kill, but Tundra unfortunately going down. And obviously in the back line, you've got Jokerism. He was not touched. And he is a big, big section of damage for you, what mate? 12, 1 and 12. Probably the most damage sustained throughout team fights. He's right going now. for a last whisper now as well, so that's going to be even stronger. There's not even that much armor up. to contend with, though. You've yeah. only really got the. Uh, got Zonyas sun and the Seeker's Arm Guard. And the Sunfire, yeah, but yeah. it's not loads of armor, uh, you know? But as a last item, last whisper. Yeah, obviously, he'll sense. want it. He'll want it, yeah, exactly. But, uh, you know, it, it, he could have gone for a BF Sword for all it mattered, and he yeah. would still be doing similar that's amounts true. of damage. I just want to bring attention back to Jokerism to Valkyrie in that last fight. Frozen Tomb came down immediately. He Valkyrie away. Yeah, got yeah. himself away from the Solar Flare, which was big, because he didn't get stunned up. He it's, didn't it's, get slowed, you know, and he did kite so well. You'd expect him to do it, oh, yeah. obviously, because obviously, you, as soon as you see a surprise engage, you want to get yourself far enough away yeah. as it possible. But it was very just quick. one point. Exactly. He could have been locked up by that Solar Flare which was a key key point thing but obviously like I said his kiting was brilliant he managed to keep himself very far away Andre from Tundra needs to be careful look at the damage coming yeah. down to him they don't want to fight here though they've done this before and they lost the team fight because of that Frozen 2 ultimate coming out from Tundra they're going to go for their second fifth dragon of the game their sixth dragon but they get the fifth dragon button. yeah they just get that reset of the fifth dragon button. two is down it's not looking good for FM not at all Baron buff still available as well on Jokerism and yeah. a couple of other members Keys and Wizzy carrying that one along as well so they'll be able to push for a little bit going to be gone in about 30 seconds or so but it looks like they're going to go to top lane and try and win the game by numbers league by numbers Excoundrel it's what we usually see FM doing at the moment it's being done to them yeah, they are really starting to struggle at this point. And uh, like I said, FM need a bit of a miracle of a team fight. But even though they managed to pick up Brixton, it needs to be it needs to be more than that. They need to get a double wombo combo with Tundra vaulting, making sure he catches out Jokerism and catches out Brixton in one ultimate. And that's a that's a big ask yeah. for a team right now that's going up against a five dragon buff. You what, mate? Yeah. And also a barren up team. I think they're going to lose Baron the Baron, Baron just Baron. now. Yeah. Look at that damage. Chriso can't get anywhere near Brixton at the moment because of that scatter of the week. Brixton positioning himself really nicely off the side of team fights. 
They're leaving Tundra to split push a little bit here because they know he's got teleport. He's actually backing away, trying to get there. But oh, Billy! Going in, but Billy with a solo play only onto with you, and that's almost a deadly only. He's very low already. He pops all of his engage tools as well. Papa Panda actually went into the back line. He's there with the unstoppable onslaught as well. Papa Panda will go down. He went a little bit aggressive with the rest of his team not following up, which is nice for FM. But Chris, oh, Chris that's the clone, though. That's, that's the clone, clone, my good man. I was surprised for a <laughs> second as well. Yeah. You what, mate, were surprised. They're going to lose their inner tower, their last one standing. Gonna try and turn on Tundra here as well. Brixton with a stun. Oh, oh nice first nice two. Frustrated. But he'll be there for a second. And there is a crescendo. There's a Zonia's as well. The crescendo lands on Slight and Dan. They're gonna go in. Brixton tries to get in with the Unleashed Power. Not quite able to get onto Slight. They will keep pushing for the Inhibitor Tower. Here goes Chris onto the back line. Unleashed Power and the Exhaust. Is he gonna get taken oh, out by the wow. He will. Dark Spear from Brixton across the wall. And a good fight there from you, what mate? Brixton needs to be a little bit careful. Here comes Tundra. Flashes oh, the back line. Wow! Just got destroyed! Wow, he got absolutely melted there! He's from Tank Towers for days. Flatter damage, not even enough. Brixton just like, yeah, I've got 112 HP. I'm more than healthy enough. Jokerism's gonna be the target. Wizzy, you flashes in. Jokerism sustaining up with that oh, blood that doesn't even get taken down. They take down the inhibitor as well. Three down. They're going for the Nexus Towers. Can they take these up? Dan is available. Hasn't got paranoia. Last man standing for <laughs> FM Esports. Unstoppable onslaught, not quite able to connect. But I have to feel that FM Esports, even though there's unstoppable onslaughts, have not quite been on point. Feel like they've been under the unstoppable onslaught here. Of you what mate who swear on their mum they're gonna take the nexus they're gonna take the game you what mate beat out fm dan in the, an amazing game here at day two of the four nations that was the biggest upset we've seen all weekend fm were touted as being potential favorites of this group and now have gone one one with you what mate getting a commanding game yeah. there and to be honest they tried to shut down brixton but you know just like the uh, plucky english bloke he is he came back and fantastically brought himself well back into that game yeah. dark spears are out of this world as soon as he got towards those mid-game dragon fights the damage was coming down from him and he managed to get a little bit of a gold back into him and all of it was going into jokerism and, just, and just fantastic i can't even i'm breathless That's i can't, I can't even talk was. about how amazing that game was because it was just an upset it was and an upset, but it was also so close from both teams so the close, entire yeah. time. You could see FM trying to eke out their advantages. They had those two great team fights where Tundra got in there with the Frozen 2, managed to do a huge amount of damage, and then just weren't quite able to lock down Jokerism, weren't quite able to lock down Brixton for long the, enough. The problem they had really was that they just couldn't get Chriso in to do enough yeah. damage. Chriso, like I said, LeBlanc is great at picking off people before team fights, yeah. but if you're trying to go into a five man team fight, especially against a guy like Brixton who just gets scattered the weeks on point yeah. every single time, you just aren't going to be able to get the damage down. Tundra showed that there was the potential for the FM team. Yeah to get a wombo combo off it. It just didn't work out. They didn't get enough people in that glacial tomb. But right now, it's gonna throw a spanner in yeah. the works for this group because you what mate are fighting. And if Cambridge can beat you what mate, there's gonna be some serious math to be done in this group. Because it's you what mate versus Cambridge Song is up next, guys. Make sure you stay tuned. It's gonna be an amazing game. I'm so looking forward to it. Guys, we'll be right back. Stay tuned.